with a lecture. It's my great pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Miloš Spasic. He is museum advisor and the head of prehistoric collection at the Belgrade City Museum. He also serves as the project director for systematic archaeological excavations at the Neolithic site of Stubline in Serbia. Dr. Spasic's research interests are diverse, covering a wide range of topics. These include settlement and household archaeology, along with the investigation of the social dynamics that influenced the formation of spaces and places within late prehistoric communities in the Central Balkans. He also explores human-animal relationships and the politics of body representations from the same period and the region. Finally, in, he, uh, in his role as a museum advisor, Miloš focuses on critical heritology and museology. He's particularly interested in developing new exhibition strategies that integrate a wider appropriation and reception of scientific insights to create engaging museum narratives. In today's lecture, titled People's, People's Places and Objects in the Late Neolithic Central Balkans, Miloš will present the history of research on Vinča culture, as well as the results of the more recent investigation into the late Neolithic of Central Balkans. The lecture will critically approach both theoretical and empirical results to demonstrate the potential of the latest research outcomes for comprehension of the late Neolithic period in the Central Balkan region. With that said, I wish you to enjoy the lecture and now I invite Miloš to take the floor. Introduction. Let me share the screen. Everything good? Yes. Let's start. Uh, dear friends and colleagues, um, my lecture today will address uh, one of the most um, spectacular uh, Neolithic phenomenon in um, Central Balkans and um, um, throughout whole uh, Europe. Uh, uh, it is a winter culture that is famous um, for the last um, one uh, century of Research. Just let me see what's going on with the presentation. Okay, so um, well, let me honor the roots of Serbian Neolithic archaeology, uh, which is uh, deeply rooted in the German cultural historical uh, archaeology by titling these next few slides uh, in classical German uh, cultural historical milieu. Uh, uh, let us see what is um, uh, winter culture in uh, its um, uh, space and time. So uh, the winter culture in realm and site, as German would say. Um, winter culture is one of the best studied Neolithic phenomenon in Carpathian Basin. And um, as in um, all stories which are devoted to the uh, subject of uh, origin of a single culture or a phenomenon, we have several theses uh, which um, address this question. Of course, uh, one is um, which sees uh, the origin of interculture as um, a migratory um, uh, movement to, uh, from Anatolia to, uh, to Balkans. And such thesis has its um, uh, good clues in material culture in variety of objects and um, uh, lifestyles which appeared in Central Balkan Neolithic later than in Anatolia. Of course, uh, the uh, um, other uh, other thesis is uh, the one that uh, sees the winter culture as out of chronos local development, and uh, this is the uh, common situation also in the, um, the describing the origin of a phenomenon or culture. Usually, you have uh, both migratory and out of chronos thesis, which are um, um, which are involved in uh, explaining um, origins. Uh, so also in autochthonous local development thesis, we have a good clues that uh, show, uh, shows us that uh, there are um, uh, certain types of material culture and lifestyle, which is typical for local uh, 
middle and early Neolithic um, uh, communities in Central Balkans, uh, which are typical for startable cultures. So we can say that uh, maybe the thesis proposed by John Chapman in his seminal book from 1981 um, uh, is the most um, closer to the uh, to the truth that intraculture is probably of polygenetic and polyregional um, origin, and that we have both uh, uh, migratory and autochthonous elements in um, uh, in its core. So, as we said, let us explain the realm or, or the space of the winter culture. As you can see on this map, the winter culture uh, covers the um, huge area of Central Balkans with uh, nowadays Serbia as a core area and uh, Southern uh, Hungary, uh, Eastern Bosnia and Croatia, Northern um, Macedonia and Northern, um, Northern Albania, also parts of the Eastern, uh, Western Romania, Bulgaria, uh, so uh, there are more than um, 1,000 uh, winter culture sites registered up until now, and only two necropolis. It's a question, um, as Doris has, uh, said earlier, worth a million of dollars, why we do have such situation with uh, so much settlements and so, uh, so small number of necropolis. So the site is, or, or the time of the winter culture uh, spans uh, throughout the of uh, the um, 53rd uh, century BC until the um, uh, 45th uh, century BC. And it is a, a new, um, a new uh, chronology which was based uh, upon a more than 200 AMS uh, absolute dates uh, uh, obtained uh, from uh, the site of Belo Birdo, uh, in Vinci, the eponymous site of the culture. Uh, we will um, today speak to the old chronology of Professor Vladimir Milicic, which employs uh, the subdivision of winter culture into four phases, winter A, winter B, winter C, and winter D, but we will uh, speak to the absolute dates where we have it. Okay, so um, well, let me give an introduction also on social organization of uh, winter culture. It, it is an uh, everlasting question since the, the beginning of uh, investigation of Neolithic in Serbia. Um, and um, the majority of thesis is explaining um, the social organization of winter culture from the um, second half of the 20th century was um, hugely, had hugely anecdotal character and was um, mainly um, based on the uh, heuristic explanations which um, were um, uh, mainly uh, subjective and which were not uh, grounded in actual archaeological records. So uh, mainly those explanations so of intercultural as an egalitarian uh, society with uh, prevailing matrilocal patterns of uh, uh, marital residence. Um, um, shortly after, during the 80s, John Chapman proposed that uh, intercultural society uh, was probably a tribal uh, organization, not a chiefdom social um, organization. And um, he uh, proposed that social stratification was accomplished only in the sphere of ritual activities. Uh, nowadays, we see that uh, intercultural, based on a lot of uh, evidence, we, uh, we see that intercultural uh, was probably trans egalitarian society with. Um, there's some sort of social um, stratification that uh, happened uh, already at the beginning of intercultural. And nowadays we are operating with various uh, uh, agendas in uh, uh, that studies and explains uh, social stratification and social organization of intercultural. And uh, one of the most um, new, uh, newest one is the um, you know, was borrowed actually from Levi Strauss model, which is called Societe Amazon, uh, which means the house society, and that probably uh, the interculture was organized um, on a household level, and that the main unit of um, uh, social interaction in uh, the interculture was uh, probably a household. Uh, so, okay, uh, as we said, um, uh, the interculture. 
um, is most famous for its uh, settlement, not uh, for its metropolis. So um, uh, there are a lot of settlements um, uh, investigated in the last uh, um, century or so. Um, and the winter culture settlements tell us a lot about the life in Neolithic of the, this period, especially uh, after the introduction of uh, geophysics and uh, um, uh, other methods of um, observing uh, during the uh, late 90s and um, in the new millennium, uh, we have seen that winter culture uh, settlements are um, very well organized and then that they have uh, more um, more than uh, 100 or 200 houses in a single society, in a single settlement. So um, such situation or such evidence implies that the, those societies uh, were very well organized uh, in terms of um, the social organization. Uh, you can see uh, in front of you the slide which shows um, a reconstruction of two phases of late Neolithic settlement at Stubline, uh, with the reconstruction of first and second phase of this settlement. Very often uh, we uh, see that uh, settlements grow in size um, as time passes, uh, and um, uh, vice versa also that the settlements sometimes decrease in size. So um, this is a good example of uh, uh, how population boom that uh, uh, at, um, at the side of Stublin and how uh, the settlement um, needed to be expanded and the new trenches needed to be dug in order to facilitate uh, more inhabitants of this settlement. Um, Interculture houses are uh, very good uh, investigated and uh, we have several hundred houses explored in uh, last, um, last hundred, um, 100 years. Um, the, the, the area they cover varies from uh, 20 to 220 meters. So we even have a clues for uh, storage houses with uh, elaborate inner division of space. And we do have um, a typical appearance of uh, late winter culture house, uh, which was uh, usually called the Nubian house, which it is a a rectangular house with um, inner subdivision onto three rooms with um, uh, places and spaces for storage and kilns and hearts in it. Okay, this is an um, artistic um, impression of um, an interculture house excavated at the site of Formadin in Yakovo, um, which was uh, hugely, uh, hugely influenced by uh, similar a rendering of uh, Neolithic and Halkolithic houses from Near East, especially from Takalpuyu, uh, where um, some sort of um, uh, special uh, function of these houses were um, uh, 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 were taught uh, mainly because of huge accumulation of uh, ritual and religious objects and uh, decorated walls of the houses. Um, uh, the original publication of the house uh, we draw from uh, such interpretation, seeing it as a temple, because uh, we um, we know that um, uh, there are a lot of houses with uh, decorated walls and with huge accumulation of little objects in it. So uh, up until now, we cannot speak of um, uh, about uh, existence of temples and special build buildings as that in. Um, Neolithic, late Neolithic of Serbia. Okay, um, another uh, type of material culture which is uh, really um, famous for winter, uh, winter societies are so-called uh, special objects and uh, those objects appear in uh, vast uh, territory of uh, southeastern Europe, mainly Vincha um, is famous for its uh, figurines and um, uh, figurine arts. Um, more than 2,000 figurines uh, were discovered just on the um, eponymous site, and it is a really important um, part of the repertoire of winter culture, winter material culture. Um, such objects appear on the west ter uh, neighboring territories also, and um, uh, those objects were given um, uh, mainly anecdotal and characteristic explanations, seeking their 
functioning rituals and religion. We will later see uh, what are the advances in uh, in uh, studying those kind of objects. So um, uh, let me give, an, uh, give you a short introduction in the, to the history of research of uh, Vincha culture. I think it is more, uh, really important to uh, see how um, uh, how the line of thinking was developing through the time and where it all started and uh, where are we today. Uh, so um, I have made um, uh, divisions, very subjective division of research into uh, Vincha culture in Serbia, Neolithic archaeology on four stages of development. Um, uh, the first one uh, I call the foundations is um, uh, is, um, uh, begins with uh, the first excavations of a Neolithic site uh, in the vicinity of uh, Belgrade in the village called Barajevo. And the most prominent figures uh, for this uh, period in the late uh, 19th century and early 20th century, of course, are figures of Mihailo Valtrovic and Milo Vasic, uh, which are the first uh, who are the first uh, university professors of archaeology in Belgrade and one of the first excavators of uh, Vincha culture sites in, in Serbia. So uh, the name of Milo Evast is um, um, strongly connected with the history of uh, uh, Vincha culture, not only because of the, his excavations of uh, Vincha itself, but because of uh, his um, a uh, profound interest in publication of his results. And we have um, more than uh, dozens, uh, several dozens um, uh, papers and books published by Professor Vasic, which remain as his uh, legacy even today. So Vincha, Vincha Belo Birdo is a site um, uh, eponymous for the Vincha culture with stratigraphy uh, more than eight meters. Uh, covering the period between Middle, Neolith Middle Neolithic up until uh, the um, uh, Middle Bronze Age, even some early Iron Age oc occupation appear on this cell site also. Um, uh, during the late medieval period, uh, there was small uh, settlement and a huge necropolis at the site also. So Professor Vasic excavated Vincha for nearly half a century, some uh, for some, some period smaller than half a century. He excavated enormous parts of the mound and um, uh, published a lot about uh, his excavation. The legacy of Professor Vasic, of course, is, uh, are the archeological collections of finds from uh, Vincha, which are today stored in a unique archeological collection of uh, Belgrade University, and also uh, the basis of a uh, Neolithic collection at National Museum is also the legacy of Professor Vasic's excavations at Savinca. So uh, Professor Vasic um, um, was one of the pioneer in excavation and sampling methodology in, in Neolithic archaeology, in European Neolithic archaeology. And he is really praised among Serbian archaeologists as uh, one of the pioneering uh, methodologists in our uh, in our science, and he, uh, he should be credited for uh, for development of a methodology in this sense. Although we do have uh, some um, inconsistency in in methodology and sampling strategies uh, with him, but um, the thing which um, which um, um, gives us the the the, the uh, picture of Vasic's um, uh, investment in Vincha is the dating controversy. Um, were regarded to uh, the Vincha site because um, uh, from you know, the really early uh, publication period of, of Vincha, uh, Vasic, uh, uh, Vasic uh, recognized that the Vincha was the Olympic phenomenon, but later on, somehow he changed his point of view and uh, proposed that Vincha actually was a Jonian colony from 7th or 8th, uh, 7th or 6th century. Uh, BC. Of course, um, uh, already then it was um, really obvious that such uh, such interpretation uh, wasn't uh, wasn't correct, and um, not a decade or so will pass until the um, uh, 
uh, refusing such interpretation by other scholars in, in Yugoslav, Yugoslav archaeology. So, um, uh, very, uh, very shortly after the uh, Professor Vasic again engagement and at Pincha, we have, uh, we have um, several of his students uh, which were uh, interested in uh, studying uh, Neolithic of uh, uh, that day's uh, uh, Yugoslavia. Uh, several of them um, were his students from Belgrade University, but unfortunately, because of um, argues regarding the dating of Mincha. They actually gained their PhD uh, not from Belgrade University but uh, in Ljubljana. So this is um, um, the this slide shows the shows the uh, first page of um, of an article uh, that um, uh, blow his um, uh, blow his Ionian um, uh, thesis dating of Mincha and also in the in the in the sense of the german um german cultural historical uh, archaeology this is reaction on his um on his dating of incha um you know, which was signed by um, a very famous uh yugoslav uh yugoslav archaeologist josip poroshek milutin garashen uh, uh garashen alois ebenac and draga garashen so uh, those are uh, pretty the uh, people that uh, define the physiog physiognomy of uh, Vincha culture in uh, second part of the uh, 20th century and uh, uh, who are the most important in defining um, uh, the outlines of, uh, of Vincha culture. So uh, let, uh, let us see what were the main research questions of uh, these pioneers into investigations of uh, Vincha culture. So regional and settlement developments were really important for, um, you know, for Neolithic archaeologists in Serbia. And I'm presenting uh, just a part of uh, uh, this uh, research. Uh, um, uh, you see a uh, artistic uh, uh, representation of a, um, a small Obrovac type settlement from Western Serbia. Um, which were reported firstly uh, during the 70s um, uh, by uh, two of our uh, late colleagues, Trebuhovic and Vasilievic, who reported more than uh, all, almost 100 such sites, um, uh, which are really unusual in terms of um, how they look like in correspondence with other Vincha culture settlements, which are really big with more than 100 houses in. Uh, in them, and here we have really small settlement uh, mounds with not more than two houses on them. So um, we see that uh, very early in 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 um, uh, the history of Neolithic archaeology of Serbia, there was a, a growing interest in um, uh, regional dynamics of uh, the intercultural community. So although the cultural historical archaeology uh, was always seeking for grand narratives which explain uh, explain um, the situation on a macro regional level. We see that uh, there was um, a potential a potential also in a small micro regional investigation uh, in um, early stage of development of Neolithic archaeology. Um, much of the work uh, uh, during the uh, during this phase was devoted to the material culture patterning and to investigation of um, a lot of um, uh, types of material culture, especially pottery, and almost uh, all authors deal uh, with some aspects of uh, winter culture pottery. And um, uh, as in um, other um, archaeologists of this period in uh, neighboring countries and in throughout whole Europe during the 50s and 60s, uh, there are a lot of flaws uh, in methodology in uh, those early works uh, because um, uh, there was no clear um, investigation agenda which would, which would um, supplement the story about the uh, development of a pottery style in winter culture. So, Basically, this, uh, this is just the beginning of uh, the investigation of material culture in the period. All, also, very huge theme 
in Inca culture was uh, related to the religion, cult, and beliefs of Inca, um, of Inca communities, and they were uh, mainly um, influenced by subjective point of views, uh, which um, uh, usually corresponds um, with the good literature, not to good science. And um, the scientists back then uh, were really um, uh, influenced by um, by a similar um, a similar um, uh, scientists dealing with uh, art history and uh, good science back then meant uh, good literature. So um, basically, no analytical data was present uh, in the studies of uh, special objects, figurines, uh, altars, bucranias, and um, those objects were mainly explained uh, in terms of um, agrarian cult and uh, Mother Earth myths um, uh, in, um, in, in those societies. Okay, um, economy and copper metallurgy was a huge theme even back then in uh, 60s, 70s, and 80s after the discovery of the oldest uh, copper mine of Rudna Glava uh, near the town of Bor in eastern Serbia. And it is really impo important um, um, uh, period in um, Serbian archaeology since uh, this is one of the first example of uh, um, excavating and explaining an um, economical issue in terms of uh, material culture studies, not uh, the issue which addresses um, settlement or um, settlement archaeology or um, uh, archaeology that deals with um, the graves and necropolis, a really important uh, theme in Serbian archaeology. And also social organization was really important. All um, uh, uh, Basically, in 50s and 60s, it was hugely uh, influenced by left-oriented Marxist discourse uh, of the time, and um, which was, again, good literature, not good science, and um, main, um, um, mainly the, um, the, there, was, um, uh, the, there was scientists that uh, were um, explaining the winter culture as egalitarian society with, again, much local um, residents with uh, no social institution and with a, a less degree of labor uh, specialization, which was um, in um, uh, uh, the basic idea also with, uh, with his discourse in, in archaeology. So again, uh, let us see what are the main theoretical discourses that were employed uh, in that time. The first one is having no uh, paradigm. Uh, well, uh, a, a huge uh, body of research was uh, conducted without any um, um, cl clear scientific agenda and almost none of low quality analytical data uh, remained after such, uh, uh, such investigations. Um, the vast, uh, uh, vast majority of the researches were done um, in the sphere of cultural historical archaeology, and it was um, uh, the Yugoslav archaeologists were best of, uh, in that field during the uh, 60s, 70s, and 80s, and there are a lot of uh, works devoted to the archaeolithic archaeology of that, that time. And as I said, um, um, a, lot of, a lot of studies had solely an anecdotal approach, which had nothing to do uh, with uh, with any kind of science in in the modern sense, and um, such approach resulted um, in huge withdrawal uh, from um, dealing with uh, some questions which were very and which are very important for the understanding of Inca culture. And this is um, the best. This is this was the best. This is could, could be seen in. Uh, in um, in sphere of ritual religion, with more than thirty year, uh, year long deflection from analyzing questions concerning cult and religion because of this anecdotal approach in it. So let us see what are the gods that uh, that created the uh, the cultural historical um, um, background of Neolithic archaeology in Serbia. Uh, the godfather is uh, Milutin Garashanin, who uh, 
defined uh, the, uh, the physiognomy of the culture in, in several of his uh, important book. Uh, you can see the prehistory of Serbia, where he devoted more than 100 pages to the study of Inca culture, and of course, uh, the prehistory of Yugoslav uh, Earth, uh, which um, uh, uh, was published in late 70s or so. So the third wave of uh, investigation of uh, Vinca culture um, started with seminal publication of John Chapman, um, uh, The Vinca Culture of Southeastern Europe, um, which appeared in 1981, and which is the first empirically and theoretical potent study of uh, Vinca culture. And Serbian uh, archaeologists learned a lot uh, from these books. Um, in terms of uh, setting up the research agenda and um, the making uh, good uh, research regarding um, almost all kinds of uh, material culture uh, and settlement pa patterns and household organizations. So um, uh, this is the starting of uh, uh, modern um, uh, late Neolithic archaeology uh, in, in, in Serbia. Uh, so uh, what, what was new uh, from the early 80s in uh, Serbia Neolithic? Uh, so uh, we, we have had uh, new excavation methodologies and new sampling and collecting and reporting strategies, uh, which were um, uh, essentially brought to Serbian um, uh, archaeology from abroad. So from through the collaboration with foreign uh, institutions and uh, foreign colleagues, uh, Serbian and Yugoslav archaeologists uh, learned their lessons um, about uh, um, modern archaeology. So um, this was uh, the first time that archaeology defined itself in, in a modern way in, in, in Serbia and that is um, Yugoslavia. So uh, you can see um, a small slide which represents uh, the excavations carried out at Kivostin, uh, one of the sites located in central Serbia, uh, with um, with more than um, uh, more than dozen houses excavated there, and um, uh, this is um, a settlement which was properly published, and uh, it serves even today as an important starting point for um, investigating the household archaeology in in Vinča culture. Uh, so Divostin was really important for uh, Serbian archaeology as well as Selevac, also uh, an international team uh, that, um, that was investigating uh, this site, also with uh, very good methodology and very good uh, published, um, uh, published excavation reports. Uh, so uh, the, fi the final, uh, final phase of the winter culture um, investigation is um, um, uh, started uh, sometimes before the um, before the new millennium, and uh, it was uh, from uh, the beginning of the third huge campaign, uh, which is uh, carried out at uh, the eponymous site of Vincha, where Professor Vasic, uh, Professor Tasic, uh, led uh, a huge uh, scientific team with a new methodology a new sampling strategy and new documentation strategy, which influenced almost all of the Neolithic projects uh, which were carried out later on. So the new excavations at Vincha set the agenda for the uh, new phase of uh, research into Neolithic archaeology. So let us see what is um, what are the news in Serbian uh, Neolithic archaeology. So, uh, Vincha Belo Brdo um, is um, excavated for the last uh, 20 century, for, for the last 20 years almost without any interruptions, and um, um, a very a large body of uh, Serbian Neolithic scientists are employed uh, at the site with on site laboratories and uh, really good recovery and documentation methodology uh, with uh, really good data which enabled. Um, and um, a really important dating project which um, uh, happened several years ago with more than 200 uh, absolute dates uh, obtained from these and older excavations 
uh, and nowadays we have a model stratigraphy and model chronology for the interculture um, uh, for, for the eponymous site um, and we don't have such a similar goodly dated site uh, in the Olympic period in, in the vast region of today. Of course, there are a lot of um, very important finds from, uh, from the eponymous site. I have chosen just one. Um, it, this is, uh, those objects uh, were recovered from really small um, house which was uh, excavated uh, um, two dec decades ago, this was the building that uh, didn't have any thermal structures with really thin walls and uh, really small in size in comparison with other winter culture uh, houses explored at the eponymous site itself. And uh, it contained really unusual objects. One of them is um, uh, the ball. Uh, with eight protomas on its rim, um, uh, showing or representing the heads of animals and the heads of the humans. And Professor Tasic gave really interesting um, uh, interpretation of this find, um, saying that this could be a house which was uh, used in some kind of ceremonies, uh, which employed a reconciliation of some of the opposed opposing structures uh, of that period, either it would be male or females or foreigners uh, or local communities, but that this object was used for some kind of ceremonies in that aspect. Belovode is another really important intracultural site, uh, which is um, also uh, explored for more than um, uh, 20 years since it is really important for the understanding of archaeometallurgy of winter culture. Uh, several about ground houses were excavated at Belovod and um, a lot of um, uh, objects uh, which are related to the metallurgical uh, process were found uh, at the site and um, also they were linked uh, with uh, the copper mine which was located in the vicinity of uh, of the site. So uh, those were mainly new um, researches and excavations that were carried out uh, some decades after the breakthrough of um, um, archaeometallurgy in winter culture and after the investigations of copper mine in Rudnaglava. Also, there were other objects of uh, huge importance uh, discovered at the site of Belovo, the one of them is this uh, fantastic group of uh, four clay bulls that were uh, discovered near the oven um, inside of a uh, winter culture house. And this house holds uh, great significance for understanding of cult and religion in, in winter culture. Uh, Plotnik is yet another site which uh, is really important for archaeometallurgy, uh, which is famous and which, is, uh, which was excavated also in um, uh, during the early phases um, of uh, uh, investigations into Neolithic archaeology, um, uh, back there in the 20s um, of the 20th century, and a renewed exploration started um, in late uh, uh, 90s. Uh, and uh, the site is famous for its uh, hoard of copper objects discovered uh, during the 1920s excavations. Uh, which holds more than 16 kilos of copper. So it is uh, one of the earliest, uh, earliest copper, um, if not the earliest copper hoard in that time. And also it is the first uh, Neolithic village that was rebuilt and presented in Serbian archaeology. So nowadays, if you happen to pass by uh, near the city of Prokuplia, you can see an actual Neolithic or winter culture uh, village that was rebuilt there. Um, Brenovac is also one of the most important winter culture sites in Serbia. It is really huge sites with um, a good co coverage in uh, geophysics and uh, archaeological investigations. So um, geophysics revealed um, several hundred houses from uh, from the site and um, actually 
those houses uh, are um, uh, represented and um, uh, reconstructed nowadays, and uh, they could be seen um, in um, in situ as they were uh, found. Some, uh, some something also about the site I'm excavating. We have started a project. Site is called Stublina. It is near the Belgrade. We have started the project uh, some 15 years ago, and it is a large intercultural settlement. Uh, um, we have done total geophysics uh, at the site, and uh, more than 200 houses were um, were recovered um, uh, from uh, the from the geophysics. Um, uh, pictures. So um, the site has. Uh, this is the geophys of the site. As you can see, a lot of anomalies and um, uh, system of uh, double trenches that surrounded the site. Uh, on uh, basing on that, we have done the reconstruction we have seen earlier about the dynamics of the um, uh, settlement dynamics in the in the how in the in the settlement. So the site is really important. Uh, because the um, organization of the settlement and also because of the various objects that were discovered from the site. And one of the fam most famous uh, ones are uh, the group find of uh, 44 figurines were, which were discovered in one of the uh, Neolithic houses uh, explored during the 2008 uh, as Publina. So the 44 figurines were found near uh, near the oven inside the house, and all of them are pretty schematically uh, shaped without any uh, detail in the representation. All of them are uh, pretty similar, some bigger, some smaller, with one of them being the largest and uh, carrying out the various types of clay models of actual uh, tools or weapons of that time. Uh, we can go uh, later to interpretation of these finds if you're interested, but let me show you some other things also. So what are the things we have learned? Uh, we have learned the new methodology and new excavation strategies, and these things is really important for Serbian Neolithic archaeology. And my, I must say that um, um, the culture and uh, the archaeology of culture is the um, Basically, the terrain from um, where uh, all style, uh, all um, all um, good examples of method methodology improvements in Serbian archaeology started. So, um, uh, basically, uh, all sampling and recording and processing uh, strategies that we have nowadays in Serbian archaeology actually originated in um, the archaeology of. Vincha culture. So um, uh, the the most um, uh, intriguing question is that uh, um, publishing strategy is uh, really poor also nowadays, and that the improvements in 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 uh, in excavation methodology and uh, recording and documentation strategy has uh, not been followed by um, good and well planned publication strategy. Um, well, let, me, uh, let us see what are the new teams in Serbian Neolithic archaeology. Households are really big team uh, in um, Neolithic archaeology of Serbia, uh, with Professor Tripkovic being the pioneer uh, in this field, uh, bringing up the uh, story about the uh, Vincha culture household as one of the main social units of social organization of uh, winter culture, and we do see a lot of various aspects in studying, studying the winter household. Um, as the professor showed, uh, we see that uh, some winter culture houses were rebuilt. We see that uh, some of the houses uh, have newly adjoined rooms. We see that some of the houses uh, were abandoned, and we can link actual, um, actual. Um, uh, points in history of these um, uh, of these houses and events which caused uh, such uh, such shaping of these houses really important team um, uh, which was uh, also influenced by um, a huge attention paid to contextual 
archaeology in winter culture. So uh, one of the new thing is also the environment of winter culture and a lot of scientists are nowadays dealing with, uh, as we can say, sister disciplines in, in, in archaeology, zoo archaeology, archaeobotany, botany, um, with the human impact upon environment, uh, on diet and um, various um, other aspects of uh, um, the relationship with um, uh, past communities and environments. And this is a, a really important uh, subject and there is not a single uh, winter culture site uh, which is excavated at the moment and uh, which do doesn't have such approach uh, in, 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 in its core. Um, as we said, uh, copper production was something which, is, which was really important for understanding of winter culture and such, um, such explorations uh, continue even uh, today with um, uh, Milena Divoic as one of uh, the key actors in, in, in this field. Uh, she gave a lecture a week ago on uh, this subject and uh, this um, sphere of uh, knowledge among the Neolithic communities is really important for understanding of uh, their life uh, styles. Uh, uh, we see that um, uh, although there is a huge interest in archaeometallurgy, we, uh, we see um, um, some less interest paid in uh, copper production. Uh, how does it influence winter communities? So basically this can be a subject for a, a future uh, research. It's also um, uh, resources are uh, uh, things which are really important for um, Neolithic and winter culture um, uh, archaeologists in, in Serbia with uh, stone um, and um, work bone and antler being the, um, the main objects of research. Again, very um, modest interest is is paid in human resource relationship. New team in the Serbian archaeology employ also uh, the question of uh, social actors and actor network theories and uh, the questions um, which are centered around several uh, main themes and that is the identity issues, social organization and social reproduction. A lot of work uh, is dev devoted solely to this uh, subject, subjects in, in Serbia Neolithic and um, it sh uh, we should pay um, some attention to, to this work since it is really crucial to understanding uh, this period. Also, uh, analytic analytical methodology improved <coughs> a lot in um, late in these days and uh, we have uh, uh, more and more scientists uh, dealing with uh, clear um, uh, research uh, agenda in terms of quantification of uh, field data uh, with Professor Porchic uh, being the most prominent figure in, um, in this field um, um, and responsible for uh, introduction of many uh, various uh, statistical approaches to, uh, to understanding the, the life of winter culture communities. Again, we, we see a renewed interest in um, the rituals and rites and religion of uh, winter culture uh, that, um, um, that was almost forgotten for uh, three, um, three decades after the uh, exploitation of this theme in classical anecdotal discourse. So nowadays we have um, a lot of contextual data which um, uh, adds a lot to the subject and uh, which can um, um, add a lot to the story um, uh, about understanding of uh, these uh, uh, phenomena and uh, spheres of um, uh, life in uh, winter culture. Also, new theme is a human animal relationship uh, with um, um, a huge body of scientists uh, dealing not only with, uh, uh, with animals in economic. Uh, uh, sphere, uh, but also in um, uh, in the sphere of uh, human animal uh, relationship, into the sphere of uh, multi species that ex existed in th those days, and uh, how uh, 
people influence the animals and vice, vice versa also. Okay, this is it. Um, uh, I just want to say that uh, um, as in other sciences, uh, there isn't a single persona responsible for the goodness uh, uh, of the science. Uh, uh, the similar situation is with Vinca culture also. We have more than 30 people in Serbia uh, uh, that are working uh, and dealing with Vinca culture. And uh, it is because of those people, um, uh, Vinca culture uh, has a really good background, a really good potential uh, in the future also. Thanks a lot. Okay, uh, thank you, Milos, for this uh, uh, very uh, uh, inspiring and insightful uh, lecture. I hope I stopped recording. Uh, uh, no, I didn't. Uh, give me a second to...